Welcome to church here at Heart Mountain. Once again, this is Heart Mountain Ministries, and I am Pastor Rob Fisk. I have to show you, we had a thunderstorm the other day, and God put the most beautiful rainbow out our back porch. So isn't this lovely? We just had to take a picture, and I just had to show it to you. Amen. So I have to share with you real quick. Um, we've had some really excellent testimonies come in that have really warmed my heart. And for those of you who support the ministry, you need to hear this. You need to hear what you're supporting. So, for instance, the first one, love your sermon. You know I have to let you know you were my inspiration. When I started chatting with you, I could really feel the spirit. I was having trouble for a while, and I lost my way, but now I'm back and loving it. Isn't that amazing? I just love, it's amazing how technology, you know, most of you watch on your phones and how the word of God can beam through the internet. Beam is probably not the right word and have such an effect. I am really surprised and pleased. Another one, love the way you teach. I can learn from you. Sometimes it's hard to pick up others. (laughs) Well, thank you, sister. That's very nice. And last one, I believe this is just the beginning. And he was telling me, continue to seek God for creativity in reaching the lost, and he will continue to expand this outreach. Blessings, my friend. Wow. Blessings right back at you. That so encourages me and makes me dig in deeper and love the Lord and want to get more teaching and make it clear to all of you. So listen to this. We're talking about curing self-esteem, curing fixing low i'll say it right curing low self-esteem yes this also can be done so let me speak to the wis- uh, the women first then i'll speak to the men dr james dobson wrote an excellent book called what wives wish their husbands knew about women <laughs> that sounds great doesn't it so and i just ordered this again for a friend here You know, it's neat being able to pastor locally as well. So, listen, ladies. Dr. Dobson took a study of 10,000 women, all races, all economic levels, just a big, wide gamut of ladies. And he put 10 questions in the survey. And this is all in the book. I recommend it. He said, list in order the things that cause you the most trouble in life lack of romantic love and marriage, uh, financial difficulties, low self-esteem, and seven more. And re- in reading the book, I was shocked to find out that every, almost every woman, 99% put lack of self-esteem, number one. And this is because of the fall. It's not your fault but it can be cured. And I'm gonna give you the cure here in just a few moments. Uh, Gentlemen, let me speak to you. You know, most men find their worth and their identity through their work or the things that they do. Show me an unemployed man and I'll show you somebody who's really low, doesn't have any self-esteem, doesn't have any identity. That's gonna be a big word today. But gentlemen, listen to this. God called us not to be human doings, but human beings. You need to start getting your identity somewhere else. And I'm going to show you where to get it. All right. So first of all, I will start with the first scripture here. Christian, you are a saint. (laughs) Me? No, you're kidding. I'm serious did a whole message on this one time and it really blessed the congregation. You don't have to die and be canonized to become a saint. The scriptures literally talk about that you are saints. Let me prove it to you. And it's in several places in the Bible, but I'm going to share with you just one. Ephesians 1.1 of the English Standard Version. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus, and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Many of the uh, Pauline epistles begin that way, to the saints, to the saints. These are just regular people that once were Gentiles or once were unsaved Jews, and they received Jesus, and now he calls them saints. You know, you wonder, how can I be a saint? 
Let me, let me try to explain it to you. An excellent teacher that I read one time, he said, we are saints who sin. I went, yes, what an amazing way of putting it. You know, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Even the people that are considered saints by certain denominations that are long dead, they sinned. There's nobody that didn't sin. So listen, if you're a Christian, you're a saint. But then if you sin and you start to feel unworthy of Jesus, what do you do? <laughs> Here you go. You turn to 1 John 1, 9. This is such a powerful verse. I've used this over and over. Hundreds, probably hundreds of thousands of times in my own personal life. Because you know what? I sin too from time to time. Yep. Don't look so surprised. <laughs> So here it is, 1 John 1, 9, in the English Standard Version. It says this, if we confess our sins, so you just go to Jesus and you confess your sin. Say, Lord, I'm so sorry. I did this and such. But you need to actually confess it out loud. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that powerful? I want you to write that scripture down. I want you to have it handy. You might want to even paste it on your bathroom window because, you know, we all sin. But to have that scripture right ready in our mind, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse us and to forgive us of all our sins. What a wonderful high priest we have in Jesus. And that's a subject for another teaching. <laughs> it's called the maturity of saints, of the, of, of the Christians. Okay, so before we get into the rest of the verses, listen to this. The word of God tells you exactly who you are. The word of God will give you identity, but some of you need to believe it. You may have heard it, but you've never believed it. If Jesus said it, that settles it. You can take it to the bank. So we're going to find lots of scriptures that the Holy Spirit has given to us, and he brings things to us from Jesus. Amen? So for the rest of the teaching, we're going to simply use the pure word of God. Are you ready? This is my favorite verse I've said it a thousand times, but I think this is probably one or two, one of my favorite verses. And, and I'll share with you why in a moment. 2 Corinthians 5.21. I'm going to read it from the NIV because it's the most clear. It says, God made him. And in another teaching, we talked about, you know, who is the father and who is Jesus when it's talking about God and him. Well, this is very obvious. God the father made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in him, Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. When I first heard this, there was a man teaching. I was in a meeting. And it's the first time I ever heard this, that Jesus' blood cleansed us so much that we become the righteousness of God. He became sin, and then he took the sin out of the way, which is great and amazing, and he rose from the dead. And what did we get from the deal? He became sin. We became the righteousness of God in Christ. So we, and this is your identity. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You're not just an old sinner saved by grace. You were an old sinner. You got saved by grace. And now, by the miracle of the blood, the cleansing blood of Jesus, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. That's who you are. So the preacher was preaching. And he taught that. I'm going, wow, this, I've never heard this before. I didn't know Jesus became sin. How, how is that possible? All kinds of things running in my mind. And then he said to all of us in the audience, I want you to repeat after me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And so I took a breath and started. I. Uh, he said, say it again. I am. The, I couldn't say it. My mind wasn't renewed. I didn't know that was the truth. I didn't think it was possible. But oh yes, it is possible. And to say that you are not the righteousness of God in Christ is to say that Jesus' work wasn't complete and he needs to go back on the cross. Listen how ridiculous that sounds. So we need to believe the Bible. And we need to find out our identity is not in what we do, 
but in who we are and what Jesus made us. That will cure low self-esteem. I've got several more verses to get to. So, And again, you might want to write these down. I had a lady, a couple of ladies told me this week that they did write the scriptures down when it came to one of the other curing series. And it's been really blessing them because they use those scriptures all the time to fight worry and to fight fear. So God is amazing like that. So write down these verses and use them. Just like Jesus said, it is written and he drove the devil away. You can do the same thing. Amen. So once again, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, God, the father made him Jesus who had no sin to be sin or to become sin. One translation says for us so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. Next verse, we're going to back up just about three verses, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, this time in the Berean literal Bible. And some of you, some of you know this, but listen, you need to believe it. I'll share with you what I mean in just a moment. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if you're a believer, you're in Christ. Therefore, is that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, the new has come into being. So some of you, you know, the devil brings up your past and all of a sudden your self-esteem goes out the window. You think, you know, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be a son of God. Well, because of what Jesus did, you are. And listen to this. I knew a man had committed, well, he'd killed a man in self-defense. Yes, he had to go to court. He was exonerated, but he took another man's life. And boy, that made him feel low. But once he became a Christian, he realized, I'll read the verse again. This is what he realized. He realized, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, and he had received Christ as a Savior, who's born again, and therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things, including that murder, has passed away. Behold, the new has come into being. You know, it's interesting, real quick. The Apostle Paul, you know, he was dragging people out of their homes and he went back when he was Saul and he was doing much damage to the the body of Christ. And then he got born again. And then as he learned, and you know, we've got a lot of these things from the Apostle Paul who got the revelation from God. As, As it went on, in one of the epistles, he said, receive us, talking about himself and his companions, receive us for we have wronged no man. What? Saul, you're the dude that, you know, dragged people out of their homes and did much harm. But he believed so much in the scriptures, in what God said. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things have passed away, and behold, the new has come to being. He was able to say, receive us, for we have wronged no man. Boy, that's redemption. And that's you too. The things you did before Christ and the sins you committed yesterday, as long as you confessed, the Lord has cleansed and forgiven you. It's gone. If you were to say to God about, you know, what about when I did this? He'd say, what? What did you do? Because he is able to cast your sins as far as the east is from the west and cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. Only God can do that. But he does, and you are completely forgiven once you've confessed your sins and he's cleansed you, or once you've received Jesus. And, you know, you need to receive Jesus. If you haven't yet, Just let me just tell you real quickly. Jesus went to the cross for you, for me, to die. He didn't have to do it for himself. He did it for us. And he shed his blood, and he was buried. He was raised from the dead. And for anybody who receives Jesus, he gives you the power to become a child of God. It is so amazing. So pray and receive Jesus. Just make up a prayer. Just talk to him. Say that I believe. And use a scripture that I put down below here, 1 John 1, 12. As many as received him, he gave the power to become the children of God. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Here's another powerful verse. It's in Romans eight seventeen, just the first part of the verse. It says that we are joint heirs with Jesus. I'm talking to Christians now. You know, you've had such a low self-esteem. If you thought, you know, I got nothing. I got no, you know, I really can't do much. Yeah, you are. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. You're a saint and you are also a joint heir with Jesus. Think about that. What does Jesus own? You know, what has he inherited by dying and being raised from the dead? Everything. And you are a joint heir with Jesus. Put it in a natural perspective. Maybe some of you have received an inheritance and all of a sudden your financial position went from empty 
to full. This is what you are. You're a joint heir with Jesus. Your future is glorious. And right now, you are a saint. So, another great scripture. These are the things that will drive out. These are the things that will make you feel eight feet tall and bulletproof. And you can push away the things that make you feel low. Just receiving the word of God and letting it build you up. Getting your identity in Jesus and knowing who you are in Christ. It will give you victory in your life and it will conquer. It will conquer low self-esteem. I guarantee you it's done it for me. It's done it for so many others. All right. <laughs> are you ready for the next one? This is in 1 John 4, 17. I love this. It says, in the King James Bible, herein is our love made perfect, or here is how our love is made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because, listen to this, as he is, so are we in this world. Now think, do you think Jesus has any low self-esteem? <laughs> do you think Jesus is sick? Is he ill? Is he depressed? No. Is he powerful? Yes. Is he an overcomer? Yes. As he is, the scripture says, so are we in this world. Saints, friends, believers, believe this. It'll change your entire outlook and you'll come out victorious. I guarantee you. Two more great verses. Colossians 2.10. It says, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. You know, you think there's pieces missing and parts missing. The only thing you really have to understand is, you know, your mind isn't saved. Your body isn't saved. Your spirit is saved. And in him, right here, the real you that lives in this body, you are complete in him. You're not missing anything. You're not lacking anything. You have the mind of Christ. The Holy Spirit gives you ability to overcome in every circumstance. And one more great verse on this one. It says, thanks be unto God who always, not sometimes, always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. <laughs> All right. I only have time for one more. And by the way, if you want these notes, there's more scriptures, probably another five or ten that I can't get to today. Email me or, you know, Facebook me, and I'll send them to you, either through text message or Facebook message or email. I'll send you these notes so you can have it. So do that, and, you know, no charge at all. I'll be happy to give it to you. This is great stuff. This helped me so much. It changed my life. It'll change yours. So last one, 1 John. A lot of good stuff in 1 John. 1 John 3, 1 in the Christian Standard Bible. Sometimes it's called the Holman's Christian Standard Bible. It says, see what great love the Father has given us, that we should be called God's children, and we are God's children. The reason the world doesn't know us is that it didn't know him. If that doesn't give you, you know, confidence, I don't know what would, because the scripture says, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called the children of God, and we are. I'm a child of the Most High God. And there's privileges, and there's perks, and there's eternal life, and there's heaven, and there's confidence, and there's a lack of low self-esteem that comes up. You, Christian, are a child of the Most High God. <clears throat> Meditate on that. Think about the ramifications of that. And it will help you so, so much. Amen. <clears throat> so, like I said, I've got lots of other scriptures here, which I can email you. But let me just jump ahead to the end here and share with you. You know, before I let you go, I want to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, this is one of the most important messages some will ever hear. And it'll cure their low self-esteem. And it'll cause them to renew their minds and realize that they're children of the Most High God. And all the other facts, facts that I just gave them in the Word of God. Father, help them, inspire them to pray. Inspire them to believe. Inspire them to replace these old thoughts of low self-esteem with these new thoughts of identity of who I am in Jesus. I thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So before I let you go, don't forget to like and share the video with someone you think that will benefit from this. And on one of these sides, you can subscribe to the channel. And then if you do, you'll get a notification every time the new video goes live. And you don't have to miss it. 
And you can go, or you can go right to our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, type in Heart Mountain Ministries, and our page comes up and it shows every single video. And you can scroll down, hit videos, scroll down, and watch all the different subjects and build yourself up in the Word. Amen. Do that and you'll be so blessed. Don't forget to write to us and then leave it up just for a second so you can get it. And then don't forget to go to our website. There are those of you that want to support the ministry. The website will tell you how to do it and it'll tell you all about us. It's just a fun page, kind of like a brochure. So anyway, listen, God bless you. I'm so happy to be teaching you the Word of God. And I'm so happy that more and more people, we had a thousand, over a thousand hits now on curing anxiety, the first one in this series. So I'll probably end up doing the uh, curing series on the Heart Mountain Ministry YouTube page as like a list, and they'd be all together. So anyway, God bless you. Until next week, you know, know who you are in Jesus. Change your identity on the inside.